Hi, this is Dave and welcome to To The Table, a series of videos where I review and discuss various board and card games, looking at them from a family perspective. Today we're going to be taking a look at Quantum from Eric Zimmerman. Now this is a two to four player 4X style game where you take on the role of a fleet commander. You are maneuvering your fleet around, trying to expand your empire, and placing quantum cubes on planets in the system to extract energy. Alright, let's take a look at this game, how it's played, and I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, let's take a look at the components in Quantum, and the first thing we see here on the right is four command sheets that come in the game, and they are representing the four factions in this game. We have the Orion Republic, the Vulpus Alliance, the Kepler Imperium, and the Andromeda Confederacy. And they are all laid out the same way here, with space here to track our dominance and research and place for quantum cubes and scrapyard, and I'll get to all of this in the gameplay. There's space along the side here to place command cards, and in the middle here we have an explanation of all of the ship abilities, as well as a nicely laid out turn sequence description down at the bottom. Inside the box, there are going to be 28 of these dice in the four colors, and they are go with each of the factions for the game, as well as these small quantum cubes here that are also in the corresponding colors that go with the faction. We also have two dice up in this corner here. These are the combat dice. The black one is for attack. The white one is for defense. And then there is 24 of these map tiles, and they have a different uh, value on each of them. And these are all sevens here at the top. We have eights all the way up to ten, and some of them will have two spaces in the center. And the way that these, car these uh, tiles are laid out here is that we have four spaces around the planet here that are outlined in blue, and these represent orbital positions. And I'll get to that in the gameplay as well. And there are two types of cards that come in the game. Here we have these white cards, which are the command cards, which will give you uh, benefits that will give you uh, some sort of an advantage during the course of the game. And then we also have these gambit cards here that are essentially a one-time use, and they can allow you to add extra ships and do damage to some of your opponents. Okay, now that we've gone over the components, let me get this game set up and I will show you how to play. Okay, I have the game set up here, the basic map configuration for a two-player game according to the instructions. So we have the map tiles configured here with values of seven all the way around here, and then we have two that are eight here, and that is going to uh, determine the strength of these planets for placing quantum cubes. Next, uh, I took five quantum cubes and I placed them in the appropriate space on each of the two player mats here, these command sheets, and then I took one die, placed it a number one uh, value here for research and one for dominance on both of the command sheets. Next I took two of the die and I placed these off to the side for each of the command sheets and these are going to be ships that are going to be in a reserve and they will not be able to be used unless we have a special ability that allows them to come out. This will leave us each with three uh, dice left in our hand. Now let me explain what these dice are going to represent. These are going to represent our ships that will be in our fleet and the value on each of the die faces is going to represent what type of ship they are, its combat value, and also the number of spaces it is allowed to move. So a number one is the most powerful ship in combat, yet it does not move uh, very much. Not as quickly as if we went to a number six, for example. This is a scout ship, which is very uh, weak, but it's allowed to move very quickly. Now let me show you one thing on one of the unused command sheets here, and that each of the uh, values for these ships, it's explained right in the middle, and each of the ships has their own special abilities so that they can use on each of their turns. So if we look here, for example, this uh, scout ship, it can uh, you can roll a new number for the scout. So we can do it, re be able to reconfigure this for free, changing it, and I'll get to that in just a second. So what we're going to do then is we're going to each take our three dice and we're going to roll them and we're going to determine our starting 
ships that we have. Now we have an option to uh, keep the ships that we have, otherwise we will um, be able to re-roll, but if we choose to re-roll, we'll have to re-roll all of them. And so I think this one will keep what it has and the yellow will re-roll here. And so now what's going to happen is we will be placing our ships uh, onto the board and we're going to start with the uh, player with the lowest ship total here, which I have a three, a six, and a one, so that's going to give me 10. And this is going to give me, I have a four, a four, and a three, which will give me 11. So this player will be the first to, to place their cubes and their ships. So what they're going to do is they will place their uh, one of their quantum cubes here as their starting planet. And this is indicated by the instructions here. And then they will go ahead and they will place their ships in any of the orbital positions starting around the, uh, the map here. And then um, we will do the same for the other player here, placing them in their orbital positions and getting ready to start the game. Okay, at the very start of the game, I shuffled up the two decks of advanced cards here, the uh, command cards and the gambit cards, and I dealt three face up and I have them off to the side of the board. And I also have the combat dice set off to the side as well. Now, the Orion Republic, which would be the yellow player, will be the first player to go because they had the lowest ship total. Now, on their turn, they will be able to take uh, three actions total, as well as using any of their uh, ship abilities, which are explained right here in the middle of our command sheet. So they have different, uh, we have different abilities that those ships can use as free actions, but we have three actions that we can take. And with the three actions, there's five possible choices that we can do. The first is to reconfigure. And to reconfigure, we would be able to take one of our die, our ships, and we would be able to re-roll the die and obtain a new, a new uh, ship type here, which went from, a, we went from a destroyer to a scout. Next, um, we can deploy ships. Now, when, um, when a ship is going to be deployed, it will be coming from the scrapyard. And what happens is during combat, which I'll get to in a minute, if the ship was destroyed, we would be able, if the ship was destroyed, we'd be able to uh, take it from our scrapyard and put it into an orbital position on any planet that has one of our quantum cubes. Uh, another action that we can do is we can move and possibly attack with one of our ships. So like for example here, this scout ship, we can move it six spaces. We probably would not be able to be in, uh, engaging with another um, ship, but if we chose to, we can one, two, three, four, five, six. The ships must move um, in one direction. They cannot move on a diagonal unless they have the ability to do so, which is uh, if this ship was a an interceptor, which is a rank five ship. So we can move, and I will get to uh, attacking in just a second. Uh, the other thing that we can do is we can choose to construct, and that will take two actions, so we have to make sure that we manage our, our um, actions wisely. And how that works is, for example here, uh, if these two ships are in orbital positions in the planet, they have to be in orbital positions, and the total uh, strength value of, their, of the ships here must equal what the planet value is. So for example here, this is an eight, and I have eight value here. What I can choose to do is use two actions, and I would be able to place a quantum cube on that particular planet. Now, um, most of these planets here only have one space on them, but some of them have two, for example, this one here and this one here. And we can only place one of our quantum cubes on that planet. We cannot choose to uh, do that twice. And then one of our final actions that we can do is we can choose to research. And when we choose to research, we will advance this die by one. And once this reaches num uh, the number six, we have reached a breakthrough and we will be able to choose one of these advance cards here. And we would be able to um, resolve its effect. 
and then this would go back to uh, number six. Now let me quickly go over these types of cards here that we have out here for a choice. So if we chose to be like, chose this as the advanced card, resourceful, um, we would be able to uh, sacrifice a ship to gain one action. So once per turn I can take one of my ships from the map uh, and put it in the scrapyard, re-roll it and gain one action for that turn. Uh, with a card like this, a command card, what I would be able to do is I would place this in the command space next to the command sheet here. And so this would be a permanent effect that will be here. Now, I can only have three of these. If I choose to get it, uh, another one, then I would be able to, I would have to discard this one. So as soon as I choose one, another one would come and fill its place. Now, the other thing we have are these Gambit cards, and this is uh, um, something that we may want to choose, and that would be this expansion. And this would be able to add a ship to your fleet. This is the only way that we can, we can get these additional ships to be able to make it onto the board. So uh, at the beginning, we only have three out there, and that's all we have. Now, let me uh, explain to you... Uh, a, one of the combat situations here and if we chose to be able to engage in combat um, this one be able to move six spaces and attack what I would do is I would move down and I would partially move in on the space of the ship that I'm choosing to attack with now what I'm going to do then is each player uh, will roll a die so the attacking player will roll the black die and the defending player will roll the white dice and we will look at the values here. And what we're looking at is the um, whoever has the lower value total will be the winner. And so what's going to happen here is that the defending player is uh, going to be victorious in that. And so what's going to happen is that this attack will be repelled and it will have to, that ship will have to stay there. Had this ship been victorious... Well, what happened was if this rolled a uh, 1, for example, and this rolled a 4, this would win 7, and this would have 8. This ship would be destroyed, it would be re-rolled, and then placed into the scrapyard where it can be deployed later. This would be able to move into the space, and then what would happen is on my dominance counter, I would advance it by 1. And since this ship lost in combat, it would decrease by one. So it was already at one, so nothing would happen. Over the course of the game, if, the com if your dominance value reaches a six, you will be able to place a quantum cube on a planet. And so, uh, which is a very, very good benefit. So you might want to uh, think about engaging in combat quite a bit. And this, this play is going to go on moving around, moving our ships, configuring them, getting them in specific positions to be able to uh, place quantum cubes. And um, once the first person to uh, place their last cube on the board would be the winner. So this is a brief overview of how to play quantum. All right, let's talk about quantum here. And there's a lot in this box. So let me start talking about the components. I love the dice that come in this game. I think that they are uh, super high quality. They've got a really, really cool feel to them. It's not real sticky, not real smooth. And they're a nice larger size. And they have uh, this frosted um, color to them, which makes them stand out uh, over other dice that I see in, in other games. And, and same thing with the little quantum cubes. They have the same feel and they have the same, uh, that same frosted uh, color to them. Looking at the components, the map tiles, they're a really nice size and they're a nice thickness, so they're plenty sturdy uh, and they're two-sided, so you can flip them over uh, and they have just the uh, the arrangement of the tiles, you can see where all the spaces are. They're easily uh, distinguishable, which ones are in the orbital positions and which ones are not. And uh, they make a nice foundation for laying out the game board. Uh, the cards themselves are a nice thickness. I'd like to see them a hair thicker, but they're adequate for this game. But the artwork on them is really, really cool. And uh, it just lends to the overall space theme for this game, lining up with the different factions. And there's really, really cool uh, font that's on there that's, that's easy to read. And then the command sheets, uh, they are really really well laid out they're nice size nice thickness and they have plenty of information that's uh, on there for every single space it explains what all of the the uh, ship 
powers are and their special abilities and there's a turn sequence order on there and then there's also instructions for where everything goes and how to handle your dominance and research spaces on the board so the plenty uh, plenty of thought was put into making these uh, quality components for the game. Now, the rules for this game are very, very well written, and the instruction manual has plenty of good illustrations and good uh, examples, and the uh, explanation is, is outstanding. I was able to quickly go through these instructions and was up and playing the game in no time. And so that's a really, really good, uh, a really good thing because, you know, it's exciting to get a new game and you want to be able to get into it. And it's really nice when you don't have to spend a whole lot of time reading the rules to be able to play the game. And uh, the fact that the game is, the rules are easy to uh, understand, the game is also easy to teach. And so that is a big bonus as well. In fact, once you know the rules for this game, between that and the, the information that's on the command sheets, you really won't be looking uh, at the, and the rules very much after like one time through, which is really, really nice. Now, looking at the gameplay, this is a 4X type game, and so you have a lot of different things that you can do in multiple paths. For victory. In fact, in this game, you can go a couple different routes to get your quantum cubes out there to win the game. You can choose to uh, you can choose to go the route of upping your research to give you advantages, so you have to use less actions to uh, to get um, your ships in proper spaces to be able to place the quantum cubes onto the planet. So you can spend a lot of time doing your research, and so later on things will go quicker for you. Or you can go, just go right into uh, can, trying to configure your ships in the proper uh, numerical values to make sure that they match the planet requirements so that you can be in position on a turn to use two actions to place the quantum cubes. Or you can go to the, the more military style and uh, go after trying to destroy your opponents through, um, through battle and uh, gain your dominance and result in infamy and being able to place cubes. So there's a couple different ways to go about things and so it's not a it's not going to be the same type of gameplay every game. So it's nice that there's multiple paths for victory. The uh, one of the cool things too with all of the ships is they all have their own special abilities which makes them uh, unique and so uh, it can be worth it to try to reconfigure them to get different types of ships so that they can do different things for you. Now the game can be a little bit mathy, and when I say that is because you, when you want to place uh, quantum cubes on a planet, you have to make sure that you have the correct number of ships in orbital positions and that they're the right values. Now th that's not, um, going to come as a result of rolling your die to get them a specific way, or you're going to uh, be able to use your uh, ship powers to change them, but you want to get them to be the proper value. And in getting them in the proper value, it also corresponds with their their um, movement too. So, if you needed to have a ship that was a two, it only can move two spaces at one time. So you're going to have to do some planning that way and be able to calculate and count to make sure that you can get your ships in the right locations. So, you uh, so that is going to be uh, one aspect where it's mathy, and then also the game is mathy when resolving the. Uh, military the uh, battle conflicts because you essentially have your ship values and then you're going to roll another die add the two of them together and then see who has the lower value whoever has the lower value is uh, going to be victorious in battle so there's a little bit of math that's in there which is good because uh, looking at the game from a family perspective you're essentially using some addition skills and doing some calculations in playing the game so you're working on your math while enjoying a space themed game uh, this is a game that uh, that I enjoy quite a bit, and uh, you know another thing looking at this from a family perspective is that this is a nice game that can be used as a gateway to teach um, people who maybe are newer to games or don't play games at all. Teach them a game that is really not that complex yet it can yet it has an appearance of looking like there's more that's going on because you know from a distance you look at this game and you see a bunch of dice that are on the board and you're kind of like what the heck's going on here but it's not that difficult to figure out so this is uh this is something that can be used as a gateway game it's a simpler game but yet there's a lot of deep strategy that's in it i like this one my only beef with this game is that there is a promo tile called the void and it's right here and this particular tile 
will give you an advantage during uh, gameplay for research. If you have ships that are on this tile at the start of your turn, they will give you plus one research. So uh, it's going to allow you to get those advance cards, which are going to give you some advantages and also may maybe you'll have the opportunity to expand your fleet. But I wish that this one came in the game as that option, but otherwise like a promo tile and you have to buy this one. So um, that's what I did and I'm... And I totally think it's worth it so I would pick this up and uh, has simple instructions on how to use it and on the back they give you uh, more configurations for uh, configuring this map and that's one of the other cool things with this game is that you have the variability for your map you can uh, lay the game board out in different ways they give you a two-sided sheet that shows you uh, some suggestions on how to lay out the the maps so that you can play you have adjustable difficulty by you can change some of the values some of the planets you can use more uh, quantum cubes if you want to or less if you want to play a shorter game and if you want to be creative and make your own uh, board layouts there's even instructions on how to do that and even how to check to make sure that it's balanced so that it's not a blowout for more than one player so lots and lots and lots of thought has been put into this game uh, lots and lots of replayability with this game plenty of strategy uh, so overall to me that's a hit and I, I want to give this one a recommendation so I'll have uh, information in the video description below if you're interested in picking up a copy of Quantum all right, and that's it for now, and join me again next time as we take a look at another game and we see how it makes it to the table.